Hi, greetings, fellow horror fans. Well, it's time once again to take a look at another classic horror franchise. And this month, we're going to be looking at a franchise that only consists of four movies. And that is, of course, <clears throat> the Evil Dead series, which, yeah, there's only four movies in the series. There's the three original ones and then the remake. So, yeah, this is, so yeah, so basically this is only going to be four days of horror instead of nearly a whole month, but, <clears throat> and what you going to do? So, yeah. So, anyway, let's kick things off by looking at the original film, The Evil Dead. Five Michigan State <clears throat> University students, Ash Williams, his girlfriend Linda, his sister Cheryl, the friend Scott and Scott's girlfriend Shelley, vacation at an isolated cabin in rural Tennessee. Approaching the cabin, the group notices the porch swing move on its own but suddenly stop as Scott grabs the doorknob. <clears throat> While Cheryl draws a picture of a clock, the clock stops, and she hears a faint demonic voice tell her to join us. Her hand becomes possessed. Turns pale and draws a picture of a bug with a demonic face on its cover. Although shaken, she does not mention the incident. When the silver trap door flies open during dinner, Shelley, Linda, and Cheryl remain upstairs as Ash and Scott investigate the cellar. They find the Natrum de Monto, a Sumerian version of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, along with an archaeologist's tape recorder, <clears throat> and they take the items upstairs. Scott plays a tape of incantations that resurrect a demonic entity. Cheryl yearns for Scott to turn off the tape recorder, a tree branch breaks one of the cabin's windows. Later that evening, an agitated Cheryl goes into the woods to investigate strange noises, where she's attacked and raped by demonically possessed trees. Ugh. When she manages to escape and returns to the cabin bruised and anguished, Ash agrees to take her back into town, only to discover that the bridge to the cabin has been destroyed. Cheryl panics as she realizes that they are now trapped and the demonic entity will not let them leave. <clears throat> Back at the cabin, Ash listens to more of the tape, learning that the only way to kill the entity is, is to dismember a possessed host. As Linda and Shelley play spades, Cheryl quickly calls out the cards, succumbs to the entity, and levitates. In a raspy demonic voice, she demands to know why they disturbed her sleep and threatens to kill everyone. She stabs Linda in the ankle with a pencil and throws Ash into a shelf. Scott knocks Cheryl into the cellar and locks her inside. Everyone fights about what to do. Having become paranoid upon seeing Cheryl's demonic transformation, she only lies down in her room but is drawn to look out of her window, where a demon crashes through and attacks her, turning her into a deadite. She attacks Scott before he manages to throw her into the fireplace and then stab her in the back with a Sumerian dagger, apparently killing her. When she reanimates, Scott dismembers her with an axe and buries her remains. Shaken by the experience, he leaves to find a way back to town. He returns. He, he surely returns mortally wounded from the possessed trees and dies while warning as to the trees will not let them escape alive. When Ash checks on Linda, he is, horrified to, to, he, is, he is horrified to find that she has become possessed. She attacks him, but he stabs her with a Sumerian dagger. But willing to dismember her, he buries her instead. She revives and attacks him, forcing him to decapitate her with a shovel and retreat to the cabin. Back inside, Ash discovers that Cheryl has escaped the cellar. Cheryl manages to loot Ash for a while, culminating her attempt to choke Ash. Ash manages to escape her grasp and shoot Cheryl in the jaw. As Ash is barricading the door, Scott reanimates into a deadite. Scott attacks Ash and inadvertently knocks the Natorum de Monto close to the fireplace. Ash gouges Scott's eyes out and pulls a tree branch from Scott's stomach, causing him to bleed and fall to the ground. Cheryl breaks through the barricade and knocks Ash to the floor. As Scott and Cheryl continue to attack Ash on the ground, Ash manages to grab the Natorum de Monto and throws it into the fireplace. While the book burns, the dead eyes freeze in place. They begin to rapidly decompose. Large appendages burst from both corpses, covering Ash in blood. Dawn breaks, and Ash stumbles outside. As Ash walks through the cabin, an unseen entity moves rapidly through the forest, rushes through the cabin, and attacks him from behind. Dun dun dun. So let's take a look at the production of this movie beginning with the background and writing. Rami and Campbell grew up together and have been friends from an early age. The duo made several low budget Super 8 millimeter film projects together. Several were comedies, including, Qua including Clockwork and It's Murder. Shooting a suspense scene in It's Murder inspired them to, to approach careers in the horror genre. After researching horror cinema at drive-in theaters, 
Raimi was set on directing horror film, opting to shoot a proof of concept short film, described by the director as a prototype that would attract the interest of financiers, and used the funds raised to shoot a full length project. The short film that Raimi created was called Within the Woods, which was produced for $1,600. For The Evil Dead, Raimi required over $100,000. To generate funds to produce the film, Raimi approached Phil Gillis, a lawyer to one of his friends. Raimi showed him within the woods, and though Gillis was not impressed by the short film, he offered Raimi legal advice on how to produce the evil dead. With his advice in mind, Raimi asked a variety of people for donations, he eventually begged some. Campbell had asked several of his own family members, and Raimi asked every individual he thought might be interested. He eventually raised enough money to produce a full-length film, but not the full amount he originally wanted. Raimi said the film cost $375,000. With enough money to produce the film, Raimi Campbell set out to make what was then titled Book of the Dead, a name is by Raimi's interest in the fiction of H.P. Lovecraft. The film was supposed to be a remake of Within the Woods, with higher production values and a full-length running time. Raimi turned 20 just before shooting began, and he considered the project his rite of passage. And now on to pre-production and casting. Raimi asked for help and assistance from several of his friends and past collaborators to make The Evil Dead. Excuse me. Campbell offered to produce the film alongside Tappert and was subsequently cast as Ash Williams, the main character, since his producing responsibilities made him the only, act made him the only actor willing to stay during the production's entirety. To acquire more of projects, to acquire more actors for the project, Raimi put an ad in the Detroit News. Betsy Baker was one of the actresses who responded, and Ellen Sandwis, who appeared within the woods, was also cast. The entire crew consisted almost entirely of Raimi Campbell's friends and family. The special makeup effects artist for Within the Woods, Tom Sullivan, <clears throat> was brought to compose the effects after expressing a positive reaction to working with Raimi. He helped create many of the films foam latex and fake blood effects, and added coffee as an extra ingredient to the traditional fake blood formula of corn syrup and food coloring. Without any formal assistance from location scouts, the cast had to find filming locations on their own. The crew initially attempted to shoot the film in Raimi's hometown of, Loyal, of Royal Oak, Michigan, but such was Morristown, Tennessee, as it was the only state that expressed enthusiasm, enthusiasm for the project. The crew quickly found a remote cabin located several miles away from many other buildings. During pre-production, the 13 crew members had to stay at the cabin, leading to several people sleeping in the same room. The living conditions were notoriously difficult, with several arguments breaking out between, between crew members. Steve Frankel was the only carpenter on set, which made him the art direction's sole contributor. For exterior shots, Frankel had to produce several other props with a circular saw. Otherwise, the cabin mostly remained the way it was found during production. The cabin had no plumbing, but phone lines were connected to it. Oh, excuse me. And now on to the principal photography. The experienced, the experienced crew made filming a comedy of errors. The first day of filming led to them getting lost in the woods during a scene shot on the bridge. Several crew members were injured during the shoot, and because of the cabin's remoteness, securing medical assistance was difficult. One, notice, one notably gruesome moment on set involved ripping off Baker's eyelashes during removal of her face mask. Because of the low budget, contact lenses as thick as glass had to be applied to the actors to achieve the, to achieve the demonic eyes effect. The lenses took 10 minutes to apply and could only be left on for about 15 minutes because the eyes could not breathe with them applied. Campbell later commented that to get the effect of wearing these lenses, they had to put Tupperware over their eyes. Raimi developed a sense, of, a sense of mise en scene when coming up with ideas for at a, coming, with coming up with ideas for scenes at a fast rate. He had drawn several crude illustrations to help him break down the flow of scenes. The crew was surprised when Raimi began using Dutch angles during shots to build atmosphere during scenes. To accommodate Raimi's style of direction, several elaborate low budget rigs had to be built, since the crew could not afford a camera dolly. One of all the Vasto cam which relied on a mounted camera that was slid down long wooden platforms to create a more fluid sense of motion. A camera trick to emulate a steady cam inexpensively was a shaky cam, 
which involved mounting the camera to a piece of wood and having two camera operators sprint around the swamp. During scenes involving the unseen forest in the woods watching the characters, Raimi had to run, run through the woods with the makeshift rig, jumping over logs and stones. This often proved difficult due to the mist in the swamp. The film's final scene was shot with the camera mounted to a bike, while it was quickly driven through the cabin to create a seamless long take. Raimi had been a fan of the Three Stooges during his youth, which inspired him to use fake shimps during production. In a scene that required a background shot of a character, he used other actor as a substitute if the original actor was preoccupied. During a close-up involving Richard Domenico's hand, op hand opening a curtain, Raimi had used his own hand in the scene since it was more convenient. His brother Ted Raimi was used as a fink shimp in many scenes where the original actor was either busy or preoccupied. Raimi enjoyed torturing his actors. Raimi believed that to capture pain and anger in his actors, he had to abuse them a little at times, saying, quote, if everyone was in extreme pain and misery, that would translate into horror. Producer Robert Tabard agreed with Raimi, commenting that he enjoyed when an actor bleeds. While shooting a scene with Campbell running down a hill, Campbell tripped and injured his leg. Raimi enjoyed poking Campbell's injury with a stick he found in the woods. But because of the copious amounts of blood in the film, the crew produced gallons of fake blood with caro corn syrup. He took Campbell hours to remove the sticky substance from himself. Several actors had inadvertently been stabbed or thrown into objects during production. During the last few days on set, the conditions had become so extreme the crew began burning furniture to stay warm. Since that point, only exterior shots needed to be filmed, and burned nearly every piece of furniture left. Per piece of furniture left. Several actors went days without showering, and because of the freezing conditions, several caught colds or other illnesses. Campbell later described the filming process as nearly 12 weeks of mirthless exercise and agony, though, though he allowed that he did manage to have fun while on set. On January 23, 1980, filming was finished and almost every crew member left the set to return home. Campbell staying with Raimi. While looking over the footage that had been shot, Raimi discovered that a few pickups were required to fill in missing shots. Four days of reshoots were then done to complete the film. The final moment involved Campbell having monster guns splattered on him in the basement. Ugh. And now, finally, on to the editing. After the extensive filming process, Raimi had a mountain of footage that he had to put together. It chose a destroyed editing association, Raymond and Nepal, to cut the film. Paul's assistant was Joel Cohen of the Cohen Brothers, who helped with the film's editing. Paul edited a majority of the film, but the Cohen edited the shed sequence. Cohen had been inspired by Raimi's Within the Woods and liked the idea of producing a prototype film to help with the interest of investors. Joel used the concept to help make blood simple with his brother Ethan, and he and Raimi became friends following the editing process. The film's first cut ran at around 117 minutes, which Campbell had called an impressive achievement in light of the 65-minute length of the screenplay. The cut scenes were to focus on the main character's lamentation not being able to save the victims from their deaths, but was edited down to make the film less grim and depressing and to be a more remarkable 85 minutes. Raymond was inspired by the fact that Brian De Palma was editing his own Blown Out with John Travolta at the same sound facility. One of the most intricate moments during editing was the stop-motion animation sequence where the corpses melted, which took hours to cut properly. The film had unique sounds that required an extensive recording from the crew. Several sounds were not recorded properly during shooting, which meant the effects had to be, had to be redone in the editing rooms. Dead chickens were stabbed to replicate the sun mutilated flesh, and Campbell had to scream into a microphone for several hours. Much like within the woods, the evil dead needed to be blown up to 35 millimeters, but then stand industry standard to be played in movie theaters. The relatively large, but large budget made this a much simpler process with Evil Dead than it had been with a short film. Yep, I'm guessing. So now finally, let's take a look at the aftermath of this of this movie. While the Evil Dead have received favorable critical comment when it was initially released, it failed to establish Raimi's reputation. It was, however, a box office success which led to Campbell and Raimi teaming up again for the release of another movie. Joel Cohen and his brother Ethan had collaborated as directors and released the film Blood Simple to critical acclaim. According to Campbell, Ethan, then an accountant, expressed surprise when the duo succeeded. 
The Coen brothers and Raymond collaborated on a screenplay, which was released shortly after The Evil Dead. The film, Crime Wave, was a box office failure. The film's production was a disaster, according to Campbell, who said that missteps, who said that misstep, missteps like Crime Wave usually led to the end of a director's career. Other people involved with the film expressed similar disappointment with the project. Fortunately, Raimi had the studio support to make a sequel to The Evil Dead, which he initially decided to make out of desperation. <laughs> and now let's take a look at the legacy of this movie. The original Evil Dead trilogy of films has been recognized as one of the most successful cult film series in history. David Lavery, in his book The Essential Cult TV Reader, surmised that Campbell's career as a practical guide to becoming a cult idol. The film launched the careers of Raimi and Campbell, who have since collaborated frequently. Raimi has worked with Campbell in virtually all of his films since, and Campbell has appeared in cameo roles in all three Raimi's Spider-Man films, as well as a very brief appearance at the end of Darkman, which have become some of the highest grossing films in history. Though it has been often considered now a choice for Raimi, director known for his violent horror films, directed a fam family-friendly franchise, the Heimer is mostly inspired by Raimi's passion for comic books as a child. Raimi returned to the horror comedy genre in 2009 with Drag Me to Hell. Critics have often compared Campbell's later performances in his, to his role in Evil Dead, which has been called his defining role. Campbell's performance as Ash has been compared to roles ranging from his performance of Elvis Presley in the film Boba Hotep to the, to the bigamous demon in the X-Files episode Terms of Endearment. Campbell's fan base gradually developed after the release of Evil Dead 2 in the short-lived series The Avengers of Briscoe County Jr. His regular favorite at, at most fan conventions and often draws sold-out auditoriums at his pub public appearances. The Evil Dead developed a substantial cult following throughout the years and has often been cited as a defining cult classic. The Evil Dead has spawned a media empire. A video game adaptation of the same name was for the Commodore 64 1984 as was a trilogy of survival horror games in the 1990s and early 2000s. Evil Dead Hail to the King, Evil Dead A Fistful of Boomstick, and Evil Dead Regeneration. Ted Raimi did voices for the trilogy, and Campbell returned as the voice of Ash. The character Ash became the main character of the comic book franchise. Ash has fought both Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees in the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash series, Herbert West in Army of Darkness vs. Reanimator, Zombie versions of the Marvel Comics superheroes in Marvel Zombies vs. the Army of Darkness has even saved the life of a fictional Barack Obama in Army of Darkness, Ash Shaves Obama. <clears throat> in January 2008, Dark Horse Comics began releasing a four-part monthly comic book miniseries written by Mark Verderhein and drawn by John Bolton, based on the Evil Dead. The film was also inspired by stage musical, Evil Dead the Musical, which was produced with the permission of Raimi and Campbell. The musical has run on and off since its inception in 2003. After the film was released, many people began to trespass onto the film and location in Morristown. In 1982, the cabin was burned down by drunken trespassers. Although the cabin is now gone, the chimney remains, which many, which many people now take stones from when they trespass onto the location. In 2020, a video game adaptation of the series called Evil Dead the Game was announced. It's being developed by Boss Team Games and Saber Interactive and set to release on 2021 on the PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox, Xbox Series S slash X, Microsoft Windows, and Nintendo Switch. The Evil Dead characters Cheryl and Scotty have been announced as playable characters alongside Ash, albeit designed after his portrayal in the later, later series entries. So yeah, whew. So overall, I definitely really enjoyed this movie, and while it's not my personal favorite in the series, it is still pretty scary overall, so yeah. So overall, I give The Evil Dead 4 out of 5 Necronomicons. Well, anyway, tune in next time as we take a look at the next film in the series, Evil Dead 2. So until then, remember everyone, hail to the king, baby. <laughs>